Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Thursday, March 10th, 2022, meeting of the Peninsula School District Board of Directors to order. Tonight, we're very honored to have students from Vaughn Elementary here with us to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we'd like to invite Principal Baraby to do the introductions. Hi, and thank you again also. Um, I'd like to, my name is Martha Arneson. I'm the Dean of Students at Vaughn. And today we have some Husky Junior coaches and I'd like to take a quick moment just to explain what that is. Our Husky Junior coaches at Vaughn, we have had 40 students who are participating in student leadership. And what they do is they're in a rotation. We have eight students a week who have assigned jobs either at recess to help with a younger grade, to help in the lunchroom, to help at, in the library, the office. Uh, they also help in uh, the music with the music teacher with a younger grade, or they also help in STEM or PE. And then um, they are, it's been a great program. They get to share their leadership qualities. And today, a really, we chose the fourth grade because the fifth grade is going to be, because it is a fourth and fifth grade leadership program. So the fifth grade is going to be singing for you today and the fourth grade is going to lead the pledge. So we're gonna, without further ado, we're gonna start with Duke Charles and Duke Charles, will you stand up, please? And he is going to introduce all the students who are going to do the pledge today. Today we have Madeline Tatchell, Magnolia Furstenworth, Dylan Lorwai, Olivia Chenoweth, Dean House, Brogan Burton, and Brogan's gonna lead the pledge. One, two, three, go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, great what a job. great class. Yes, absolutely. So fun to have you guys here tonight. Thank you so much. Um, and that's not all. We are further honored tonight because we get a performance by more Vaughn students at the back of the room. Mrs. Mills, it's all yours. Keep Peninsula. Good morning. No. <laughs> Let's start that again. Somewhere. Good evening. My name is Lisa Mills, and I'm the music teacher at Vaughn Elementary School. I am excited to assure you that music is alive and well in our elementary schools. Representing Vaughn Elementary School tonight are eight fifth grade students and they're demonstrating skills they've practiced in music class. Rhythm and timing, mallet technique, um, reading notes on the treble clef staff and listening to each other, which I, I know we can agree is a really powerful skill <laughs> right now. Um, so in the first piece they're going to play, listen as they improvise harmonies using notes of the G major chord. Each one of them has also created and practiced a solo to include as part of their introduction. So without further ado, and now the musicians.
Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you, Mrs. Mills, for all you're doing with that program and for coming tonight. We appreciate you. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Oh, we have a quick question. Mrs. Mills. Mills. Quick question for you. Can I, can I just ask a question? Are the students in the class are re required to learn to read music as well? What? Ask the kids. Oh, raise your hand. Are you required to read music in class? Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, thank you. Oh, I got that. your <laughs> Thanks again. Next up, approval of the agenda, which won't be nearly as fun. <laughs> thank um, you, parents. Thank, Thank you, you all so for coming. Bringing, Appreciate it. In. That was a treat. Woo -woo. <laughs> Do we have any changes to the agenda? Um, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved by Chuck and seconded by Jennifer and um, to approve, excuse me, to approve the agenda. And all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion is carried. The agenda is approved. And we have one more special thing tonight, uh, recognition. We're very pleased to recognize our unified basketball team. And I'd like to invite success coach Jennifer Bies to the podium. She's going to tell us more about the team and to introduce them. Hey, uh, hi. I would actually like Jonah to come up and introduce, uh, just kind of tell a little bit about um, Unified Sports. And then, uh, Gwen, will you come and introduce your teammates? Hi, my name is Jonah Derrick. I am a student at CTP. I first moved to Gig Harbor in, 20, in 2018 and I graduated from PHS. I first found out about Unified Sports when I lived in, Colo I lived in Colorado. Um, and I played in Colorado for two years. And it has been a, and it's been a uh, big part of my life as well. Um, when I started my junior year at PHS, I was welcomed into the school and made, to, and made really good friends. But I also really miss having unified sports because it had been such an important part of my life. My mom was a big part, was a big encourager for me and my dad helped me take the steps needed to get the program started. Can I take this off? Okay, thank you. <laughs> to get I'm this, softy, yeah, like started. <laughs> we reached out to Special Olympics and met, and met, and met with school leadership I am very thankful to all of the te teachers and le leaders who helped me and supported me so we could have unified at PHS. It was the best part of high school for me. Unified to me is more than just a memory or a meaning. To me, it's, an, it's just another chapter and a very special book of fun, joy, happiness, and new friendships. At first, I thought it was impossible to believe in such big things, but now I know it's not po anything's possible. Okay. And so I guess I'm going to have each one just say one thing after that. That's that meaningful about unified, so don't introduce everybody, so that'll be quicker, and then we'll just have everybody. Don't introduce everyone? No, just you. Okay, just me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gwen. Um, What's your favorite thing about unified? My favorite thing about unified, honestly, is getting to know every single one of these amazing people. 
they have such great personalities and they definitely know how to make you smile and my senior year would be way different and probably um less um just less without it um yeah i love it and gwen goes to gig harbor high school so she's one of my partner players that came specifically from gig harbor high school to do this at peninsula thank you micah Come on. Do you want somebody else to go first? Do you want Josh? Yeah. Okay. And then you could come start rolling. Start rolling up here, buddy. Hello, my name is Josh. I'm a mentor on the Unified team. And um, to me, it just means togetherness. Uh, I've made so many new friends. And it just goes like saying hi to a friend in the hallway, giving, getting a wave. It just makes the spirit of PHS just that much more special to me. So. Um, yeah, I would just say togetherness is a huge part of all that. So thank you. Zach, you keep coming. You're coming. You're going to be here. By the time you get here, you got to, got to get this rolling. All right. Hi everyone. My name is Zach and I am new here to Washington about like five months ago. And I really love how the unified sports. I am also the co- coach of stretcher actually of, of the unified basketball I hang out with my friend his his during basketball and we get a, a lot of wins sometimes we losers but that's okay <laughs> we we win and lose so let's make this <laughs> Everybody on the team has a leadership role. So Zach's role is he is the stretching coach. He, he's very proud of it. Come on up. I'm very good at it. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Unified? Helping out the team. Favorite part about Unified? Shooting hoops. Yeah. Shooting hoops. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Chris. Um, my favorite part of Unified Basketball is um, friendship. Hello, I am Mark Slocum. I am a senior at Peninsula High School, and um, part about Unified I might like is competing. I've competed for two years on Unified, and this will be my second year of doing Unified soccer. I did it freshman, and I did s sophomore and junior year, and I just want to say we got this about Unified. We just know that practice, teamwork makes the dream work, and what? Amen. <laughs> and then I just have two parents that just want to share what it means for their family to be able to have this opportunity. So, um, Janelle, and then um, I'll have the jokes. So my name is Janelle Hester, and I'm mom to Micah there. Um, I. I have said so many times when I explain what it's like to go to Unifying Game is if you want something that is going to touch you so deep in your heart, go to Unified Game and watch them play. It is amazing, um, just the camaraderie they have, but the other people around too to have that camaraderie. For Micah, um, it's a great thing because being in a wheelchair, you don't get to play the sports or do the things um, as much and so with Unified he gets right out there on the court and um, the amazing other teams are so great and let him get the ball and be able to shoot and it really makes him feel like he's a part of something he's a part of a team that he doesn't really get in a lot of dif different situations so and all he talks about is 
his friends and his team. And so he gets to be really a part of something. So it's amazing. So watch a game. It's great. Hello, my name is Jennifer Flint, and my son is Ian Nelson. Ian, wave. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank um, the school district for the opportunity for, um, for Unified Basketball. Um, Special Olympics um, has been a huge part of our lives with Ian for a number of years, and Unified, um, because it is with his classmates and peers um, in the school district, it's been amazing. Um, I don't know if any of you had kids with disabilities. No, okay. Um, it is quite an experience and it is a difficult road, um, but programs like this make our lives much happier and the inclusion our children feel is amazing because we don't always get that. They're often left out, shunned, um, you know, things like that. So. Um, the inclusion and the camaraderie and the friendships they make with their peers is phenomenal. So, thank you. Just in case you don't know, the difference between um, Special Olympics and Unified Sports is that they're actually competing together at the same time. So if you have a mentor in a special education, um, special Olympic setting, they're just helping coach them and then they step aside during the competition. This is the most beautiful basketball, soccer, tennis that you've ever seen because it's like what you want to see on your playgrounds. It's everybody playing together to achieve a goal. So I just wanted to clarify that if you didn't know. Hi, I'm John Derrick, I'm Jonah's dad. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to say two things. The first is, two years ago when we were sitting around the table talking about the possibility, um, it, I was so impressed with the leadership from Peninsula High School. I especially want to thank uh, Jenny and Wendy Christensen and Joelle Rickard and Ross Filkins because their support has been phenomenal. Uh, I've been blown away by it. And secondly, um, I just wanted to take the chance to publicly say that um, my experience with the kids at Peninsula High School, they're some of the most outstanding young men and women that I have ever encountered. Um, their approach to inclusion, diversity, teamwork, friendship um, is inspiring to see. So you guys should be proud of all your kids. <laughs> So thank you so much for letting us come and share. Thank questions? you so much for coming. Yes. Do you guys have any questions or any more things? I just comments? wanted to make a comment. I, I, the, one of the very first things I saw was your presentation two years ago when I first became a board member right before everything shut down and I really wanted to come watch a game and I think I, I came at the end of the season so I didn't get to see it. So this year I was very excited to be able to go and watch you guys compete. I was blown away first of all by the level of competition let's let's not forget this is still a basketball game and you guys are playing some serious basketball um, and you wear the uniform so well and so proudly I just I was so proud to be there as a member of the Peninsula School District um, with sorry with the mentors and the kids out there you just it is so obvious that you're a team and that you're friends and that you work together and you belong to something so special and so much bigger than each individual part. So I just want to congratulate coaches, staff, kids, parents, everyone who's worked on this because certainly, certainly are a point of pride for our school district. I do not think that can be topped. <laughs> Let's adjourn. Um, no, now we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, is there any discussion on the consent agenda prior to the vote? Is there a motion to, to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved by David and seconded by Natalie. 
to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion's carried. Consent agenda has been approved. For our study session tonight, our executive director of the Department of Learning and Innovation, Melissa Wisner, is going to explain the way our session is going to work tonight. And as she comes up to the podium, um, well, I'll explain this after you. I'll let you go first, <laughs> and then I'll explain the format. Melissa? Thank you. So I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that's read from something I've written, because, you know, I'll go all extemporaneous. And, and while I'm sure you'd love to listen to me go on and on, what I really want you to have opportunity is to um, interact in the study session when we'll adjoin to the commons, um, spend time with the staff there, and listen to what they have um, pre uh, prepared for you, and then ask lots of questions. So I've timed myself. I'm finding myself at five minutes. That's a record for me. So, um, but you never know. You'll know when I, when I go off script. So thank you, board members and Superintendent Barr, for hosting DLI at this evening's study session. We are delighted to be here. To start us off, I'm presenting a general overview of the purpose and work, including specific information about curriculum adoptions. In addition, I'll brief you on what you'll experience during our interactive session that immediately follows this in the Commons area. A heartfelt thank you to the DLI staff for preparing and joining us for this evening's presentation. Thank you. I know the work that you've put into it, and I'm so glad that you're here to show. And we're, I'm very happy that we can be here um, to highlight all the work that you do. Tonight, we'll be sharing information about the instructional side of DLI, the Department of Learning and Instruction, which is curriculum, instruction, and assessment. We have five stations set up, each with a different focus from these areas. Some are specific in topic, and others provide a broader picture of our work. As you visit each station, you'll learn more about some of our responsibilities and have an opportunity to ask us questions. Please ask us lots of questions. If we can't answer your questions tonight, we'll research and get back to you with that information. The learning and teaching part of DLI provides a wide variety of support to our staff, ranging from individual side-by-side -side coaching with teachers, um, learning support for administrators, and district-wide parent presentations. We are learner-centered. Our focus is to inspire, support, and collaborate with our PSD educators, classified support staff, and administrators who directly support our students in the classrooms and online. We consistently partner with other district departments who also support students, including student services and, this is a long one, career connected learning and career and technical education. <laughs> All PSD students are our students. One part of our work is course reviews. I'm going to share a brief overview of the process for these reviews. Per our board policy 2020, the curriculum shall be evaluated, adapted, and developed on a continuing basis. Instructional materials shall be selected to assist students in attaining college and career life ready skills as required by state standards. Based on OSPI's model for course design and instructional model material selection and adoption, we plan for district courses to be regularly reviewed to ensure their alignment with state law, teaching and learning standards, and research-based practices. The guidance supports several RCWs and WACs. A cycle of review is established so that curricular resources are examined on an ongoing basis with the purpose of adherence to legal requirements for school instructional material selection, course graduation requirements, federal accessibility requirements, and professional learning requirements. In the last two years, our reviews have been focused on the most pressing priorities based on several factors. These include the age and availability of the instructional materials and lack of materials across a grade span for a core content area. Recognizing the work ahead, 
we implemented a new and more rigorous adoption process that took into consideration the requirements of OSPI and various RCW and WAC. This includes defining the vision of the course, analyzing data, reviewing materials, selection of materials for a pilot process, and after the pilot process, selecting a resource. This work takes a school year to complete, including IAC recommendation and board approval. Teacher voice is highly valued in this process. Teachers have the largest representation on the adoption team. Others include DLI staff, student services, and administrators. DLI staff are non-voting members. Students and caretakers are also given opportunities to provide feedback during the process. But wait, there's much more work once a resource is selected. The work continues with developing a three to five year plan of implementation. Throughout this time, teachers will be supported with professional learning on the state learning standards, the selected instructional materials, developing and using assessments, and employing high leverage instructional strategies. You may recall our two most recent adoptions, STEM scopes, which was the K-5 science-based adoption that was in December of 2020, and the grades six through 12 secondary social studies adoption, which was in May of 2021. You'll recall, you may recall also our board presentations during these adoptions, and in that way, you saw evidence of the process that I've just described to you. We are currently in a high school core science adoption and you're gonna hear more about that in the upcoming session. As we move through the most immediate priorities, in this case, it has been the adoptions that you've seen, so science at the elementary school, science currently at the high school, and social studies at the secondary level. As we move through these priorities, other courses are being reviewed using the same process. I hope that this overview will, has framed the process of course review and adoption and outlined what you will participate in during the next session. I will be at a table in the Commons and will be happy to take your questions. So uh, just a point of um, information as we move forward. Um, I'm going, we have five tables, so I'm going to number you off, um, starting with David. David, you're number one. All right, so David, I'm asking that you please uh, start at table one and table two, and I think you understand that process. And we have a um, delightful musical selection for you this evening. So when you do hear the music, please uh, move on. We've given you about 10 or 12 minutes at each table, and that is time for us to provide you some information. Um, many of the tables have um, handouts for you as well and time for you to ask questions. And again, if you have more questions and you have to move to the next table, uh, catch us, we'll get the questions written down and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So again, thank you for your time. And again, um, thank you for allowing us to be here to highlight the, the, imp the important, really important work that we all do. Thank you, Melissa. Anybody have any questions real quick before she... So music means move, yes. not, not ask you, more questions. You can't, just okay. stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm looking forward I'm to... I'm glad you revoiced that. <laughs> <laughs> to moving in there. Uh, before we do um, transition, I just want to remind our viewers that this section of the meeting is going to take place in the Commons here at Swift Water, so it will not be streamed. Um, but it's going to be a, an interactive and intensive learning session for the board. And um, so we won't, we won't be able to stream it. But we would like to invite any community members here tonight to join us in there. You're welcome to move around to the stations as well, because it's a great way to have uh, questions about curriculum and adoption uh, answered directly. So please do join us if you'd like. And then following the study session, um, just to note that we will have a short 30-minute executive session, and uh, at which point no action will be taken. And so now we're just going to move into the study session. Thanks, everyone, for coming.